afternoon. Today is the pearl anniversary of this podcast. Yes, you guessed it right. This is the 30th episode of the Audible Weed Walk and this is Nina. Thanks for tuning in. I thought, isn't 30 a cool number? So much of our time, uh, we actually keep um, in chunks of 30, you know, 30s and 60s. That's how we count our hours. I proceeded to check more facts about the number. Here are some cool ones I thought I'd share. Gamma Pavonis, which is a star that is 84% larger than our sun, is the 30 light years away from us. Uhu. Apparently, in biblical time, men were supposed to have reached mental and physical maturity only at 30. There are exactly 30 upright stones at the Sarsen Stonehenge in England. And 30 is written in the Roman script as XXX. That's pretty cool. Enough of this nerdy facts with 30 and let's get back to the weeds. I thought this episode will be a good one to talk about the journey. It started long before the weed walks actually. Some of you who know me also knows that I have some issues with directions. Nothing new. It was always there. I always find my way eventually, usually in time too, but sometimes there are slips. In my workplace in Ohio, a distance away from the city, I used to get lost in the hills. Lovely ride later, when I finally used to reach the office, my indulgent colleagues used to announce, Yes, Nina has found us. Well, as a graduate student, I remember finding lecture rooms for genetics class was a bit difficult for me the first time. As I entered the room a few minutes after the class had started, the professor was giving some tips on how to approach the course, how to study um, efficiently. One of the first sentence I heard was, you can get a coloring book with the cell structure, etc. at Mishmish, which was the local art supply store, and learn about it in that way too. For that day at least, he was my most favorite professor. All our lives growing up, I had a tendency of to doodle. And all along the way, by my teachers, my parents had stopped me from doodling while studying. Studying and doodling in books, notes, that was my tendencies. Here as a professor, he was encouraging us to actually do the coloring as a means to, means to study. I was actually very impressed. Promptly that at the break that same day, I found my way to Mishmish, the store he had mentioned. And there, right at the back of the store, there were a range of coloring books. Cheap, simple publication on botany, human body, cell structure, etc. They were on sales at $1.99. I got one for the cell structure, of course, and then there was another one on wild plants. The drawings were okay. They were not botanical. The names were written, but no further information were provided. Still, I found them awesome. In many moves in the, within that country and across the continents, this coloring book remained with me. And I nurtured a wish of finding a similar books when I get back to India. Mark my word, I was planning to find one not create one. Only when I had called up, was called up by the publisher uh, asking me to defend my uh, coloring book publishing and uh, if I could bring an example. Of course, I took the wild plant book I had. I had produced that with the caveat that the publication I am planning will be quite different. The book itself will be, uh, will have a handmade paper cover and will be hand-stitched to convey environmentalism. The picture will be botanical drawing and would be drawn to scale and there will be a lot more information than this. Each entry in the book will be supported by research. But, I, but before this meeting and after, I searched all over the internet and bookstores for similar coloring book published within India and I found none. Well, as they say, the rest is history. The book was published in 2015, 
It's in September actually, almost October, in an unique genre of its own. It was the first coloring book in India that is also meant for uh, that was also meant for adults. Also, still it is the u- most unique one in that it is based it is focused on science and nature education as much as it is for fun and meditative engagement in coloring. Surely it was not a passive publication. When not outdoors, one could color and one could carry the colored insert along when walking outside the book itself one could carry and provide and take notes within and many people have done that so weed walks were not in my plans i thought people themselves will use it that way then i noticed anand dijang was conducting these beautiful trips within oroville to our local farms where residents and guests could sign up, visit, spend some time, harvest and have lunch. I was noting the announcements and wanting to join them if term- time permits. I remember the photos from the, their trip to Sarah's garden um, and I wished, oh gosh, I missed this one big time and I want to join that the next opportunity I get. Sarah Kundik who now posts wonderful YouTube videos in her channel called Keep It Raw, at that time also used to occasionally hold a raw food lunch. Mm. I managed to sign up for that. In the meantime, Anandi called me requesting a weed walk. What? Why? She mentioned that she had many who had visited Sarah's garden and had noticed this edible weed coloring book she was referring to and Sarah had recommended others to do so also. Anandi, before calling me, had acquired a copy of that book herself and thought it would be great to have a guided walk and she think, she thought others would be interested too. Really, I wondered. When I managed to visit Sarah, I not only was pleased to find that she used the book, I revel the different way she used the wild weedy leaves and flowers in making veggie leathers in mueslis and they were all lovely. I agreed to Anandi's proposal and we met up near the town hall, the administrative block in Oroville, one early morning and yes, there were a handful of people waiting. That time, the book was still in print and Anandi, being very resourceful, had also got some extra copies for people to purchase if they wanted. Now that, now that the books are, book is no more in print, I have the last few copies of the book that I take along to, uh, in these weed walks for people to share who do not have the copy of their own. So, if I call the book a launching pad, The weed walk was definitely the flight or bus or walk or whatever you can imagine and they experienced the journey. More I did the walks, more I connected with people, more I explored the different corners of Oroville and different places wherever I went, more I researched and more I learned. Recently Krishna McKenzie mentioned in a post and I read it out here, in last school lunches In last school, lunches are served with salad composed of local weeds thanks to the huge efforts of Nina Sengupta and the edible weeds coloring book. Mark my word, this book will grow to be recognized as an invaluable resource of Oroville. I am thankful and grateful all at once. I hear the food basket at Solitude Farm can pack more because of their and others' awareness of the edible greens. Much of it had happened when Krishna took the initiative and put together a team of volunteers and his own time and energy in making the YouTube videos. Marco Bosco made the wonderful initial videos and Ruben still diligently does his research and posts this podcast every week in YouTube with subtitle. There were farmers, permaculturists, food foresters who who writes to me from time to time how this book has been their go-to book and how they would love to join the walk. Two names comes to mind. One is Rosie Harding um, in Goa and Nayantara 
in Secunderabad. Both this Rose's um, uh, garden I have never actually visited, but Tara had um, in 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 Secunderabad in her own setup called Our Sacred Place is where the book actually got launched. Now Matilda and in Marx Cafe had started incorporating the wild greens in their menu. Menu, whoever. Um, who even after knowing um, that there are certain edible weeds, uh, could not actually incorporate them in their own food. They find that having them in the menu at Mark's Cafe um, is a good leap and start um, good leap for them to start eating, and it's immensely helpful. There are bakers, chefs, and food enthusiasts who makes their own journey, starting from the book and the walk, and I feel elated at their achievements when they share. The February issue of Orville Today features an article by Peter summing up this journey. It has some lovely photo, the Tuduvale Rasam along with the uh, paste of the uh, of the leaf on this on its side and the Vanchina Charu for me were the best photos of the lot. And these photos were shared by Deepa Reddy. I had mentioned her before, and she has her own setup called Patichery, and you should check it out. So it was a giving that was equally rewarding for me. But again, I had assumed that all large cities or interesting towns have must have their own guided foraging or weed walks. I do not know why, but I thought so. Perhaps a wishful thinking. It was actually Lalita Krishnan who pointed out that weed walks are were quite unique. She had contacted me for her podcast, Earthly, Earthly Matters. While discussing, she expressed how she wished she could join. I had retorted, maybe, um, you know, until she can join here in Orville, she can find a weed walk in her own town. Lalita told, do you think that there are weed walks elsewhere? Aren't there? Was my response. No, informed Lalita, yours is pretty unique. Well, this is the best season for weed walk, folks. Exceptionally, I'm offering one every Saturday morning. If you have the time, come and join and start your own journey and enrich mine. So with that, I end the podcast today. Good wishes to you all. Stay well and stay safe. I'll see you next week. <laughs>